What's up y'all? Today I'm going to teach you how to get sponsored. I have done a video before on how to get sponsored, but this time I'm going to try and go a bit more in depth. It might be a bit more valuable for someone who's already sponsored trying to maybe get some travel budget or even a full salary from a brand. I know wakeboarding shouldn't be about the money, but if you are trying to do it full time, it is a pretty expensive hobby and a little bit of budget could help you get more time on the water, letting you live your dream and have fun on your wakeboard. This video could be helpful for someone trying to get their first free board or even a discount on product, but the video is mainly geared towards a pro rider trying to take that next step. First things first, team managers or someone high up in a brand, let's say Aaron Grace, Greg Nelson, Jeff McKee, Paul O'Brien, Kobe Mixich, or someone like that, if they don't know who you are, this is kind of a problem. It's actually possible to be doing 1080s, double flips, 1260s, or even double moves, and no one still knows who you are. Say you are one of these people who are absolutely ripping and a team manager might not know who you are yet. You likely do ride for a rep for your area though and that rep is probably somehow connected with the team manager. If this is the case, maybe talk with your rep, tell him your future plans with the sport and maybe have him help you get connected with the team manager so hopefully you could move forward with that brand. You do need to be prepared though before you come in asking for budget because if you are absolutely absolutely ripping and you just come straight in asking for maybe some salary for the year or a travel budget you might end up looking pretty stupid and the only reason this would make you look stupid is that there's at least a thousand other kids out there absolutely ripping so how does you ripping make you any different from them in my opinion currently Corey Tunison is the best boat rider in the world Trent Stuckey is the best cable rider in the world and Gunther Oka is the best all around really and if you're just trying to be the best ripper ever and you're not better than them you're not really that marketable are you so in my opinion if you're trying to make that next step you need to differentiate yourself from every other rider out there let's take Graham Burris for example he's an absolutely amazing cable rider one of the best to ever do it but is he the best in the world probably not but Graham isn't really trying to be the best in the world. He's doing his own thing. He spends hours every day on maps searching for the dopest winch spots ever. He probably has over a thousand different winch spots pinned across the United States and even into other countries. And something that he does is that he gets off his ass and he goes to those spots and he makes happen. After going to all of those awesome spots and filming at each of them, Graham takes those clips and mashes them together into some of the dopest full part sections ever seen in the sport of wakeboard. There's not a lot of other guys doing this because it's time consuming and difficult, which separates Graham from the rest and really makes him stand out. And I would imagine that this would give Hyperlite a lot of exposure and would probably sell a lot of boards, not only his board, but all of the boards as a whole. So it would make sense for a brand like this to want to invest in him. Let's do another example, maybe a boat rider. Let's say Massey Pifferetti. He wins some contests here and there, but is that really why he's so special? Massey's a pretty loud guy, super outgoing, and has a pretty awesome personality. He also has his Pizza Boy branding going on, which is pretty cool and also makes him a bit more memorable. Let's talk about Massey's riding though. He shreds on boat, cable, and winch, but what I think he's best known for is his amazing style when riding behind the boat. Massey has always kind of been a superhuman on his wakeboard. He's one of the top wakeboarders in the world. And in my opinion, when he started to separate himself from the boys is when he really started tweaking out his style, really grabbing differently, doing all sorts of crazy grabs in his tricks. And also he was one of the first guys to do multiple different rewinds on his wakeboard. I think he was the first person ever to do a zero so like a 360 rewind 360 doing a complete zero i also think he might have been the first person to do a tootsie roll rewind so he really innovated in 
doing a lot of really creative, cool, different tricks behind the boat. So all in all for Massey, he's got the awesome personality, the super dope wakeboard style behind the boat. He can also ride behind the boat, cable and winch. I think it's pretty unheard of for this, but I can see why the brands Massey rides for it want to invest in him because I do think he would be a very solid return of investment. Let's uh, look at another example of a group of riders that you may not have heard of if you're brand new to the sport. If you've been around for a few years, you probably heard of them, but uh, yeah, let's talk about Shredtown. Shredtown, in my opinion, is kind of the first group of riders to really step out of the box, but then step out of the box even further and further again. Shredtown consisted of three riders, Andrew Adams, Davis Griffin, and Chris Abity. From my perspective, it seemed like Andrew Adams had the vision for the whole group. He really filmed everything super awesome. Davis Griffin was kind of the personality, the kind of fun guy in the group. And uh, Chris Abity was sort of the absolute ripper, the heavy hitter in the group. Although everyone in the entire group absolutely shreds. Shredtown was so different from the rest of the industry that they sort of stood out like a sore thumb. They used to build the craziest setups and film on each and every one of them. One of the first ones I remember watching when I was younger was Shredtown Dominoes. They actually set up all of these pallets back to back and hopped up and skimmed across the top of them. It was really some of the very first creative feature riding I ever saw. Shredtown would do tons of creative winching, creative jet ski riding, and just go to all sorts of crazy spots. And they were one of the first crews filming everything they were doing on their own and just blasting it out there on the internet for everyone to watch. And uh, they really started to blow up at the time. Honestly, I don't think Slingshot would be the brand it is today without Shredtown. I kind of feel like Shredtown really kicked things off for that brand and uh, got it started in the wake scene. That's my personal opinion, of course, but I really can see why they were a solid investment. Let's go with a little more current example. Let's talk about Space Mob. Space Mob is a pretty huge group, but I will say that the two main kind of leaders of this are Quinn Silvernail and Wesley Mark Jacobson. Space Mob did an amazing job marketing themselves. They even have their own gang sign. In my opinion, they're still kind of the leaders in creativity today. They adopted skinny stance on their wakeboards super early and in my opinion are sort of who made it cool. I don't think they were the very first who adopted it, but I do think they are kind of the ones who just embraced it and made it like a super dope thing to do. And now I almost feel like skinny stance isn't really skinny stance anymore. It's more like normal stance. Aside from Space Mob's riding, in my opinion, they're kind of starting a lot of trends in wakeboarding. They sort of brought in the helmet that completely covers your ears. They are running wake pants again and sort of made it cool again. They're also running directional wakeboards and uh, yeah, Wes is kind of running some crazy haircuts all the time and uh, they're really just kind of throwing it out there and being very different from everyone else. And not only are Space Mob being different from everyone else, they are documenting everything along the way, filming every bit of it. There are nine different coalition parts online ready to watch right now. They have filmed three different full length movies and they film tons of smaller things along the way. And uh, yeah, they put out really awesome content. They did host a few events this year as well. And over the last few years, they have held one of the biggest events in our sport called Yard Sale. They've had Yard Sale one, two, and three over the past few years. So uh, yeah, that's super dope as well. I would imagine that all of these things they do combined would be very beneficial for any brand and that it's probably why brands are investing in them. And let's give an example about a rider that wins a lot. How about Corey Tunison? Corey is a world champion, a pro wakeboard tour champion, a masters champion, a nationals champion. I don't know if he did all of those things this year, but he did win a lot of those this year and he ended up pretty much on top of almost everything this year. And in my personal opinion, he is the best boat rider in the world right now. And uh, not only is he the best boat rider in the world, he is also super easy to talk to, super easy to get along with. He has a pretty awesome 
personality and uh yeah his social media is thriving he's killing it on instagram and uh yeah this would be a guy that is super hard to beat so if you are trying to be the best in the world and achieve that spot in boat anyway you're gonna have to beat this guy and uh i'll tell you what that's not gonna be easy but if that is your goal you better get better than corey because right now he's that guy and he has the awesome personality to follow so that's super great for his sponsors as well corey's on top and he's been on top for a while and i can see why he's a solid investment if you're a fourth place and lower kind of pro, hell, even a second or third place kind of pro, no one really gives a shit. So you better have that awesome personality, that awesome social media platform, and a way that you can reach out to a lot of people because that's kind of very, very important to being valuable to a brand as well. So if you're not on the absolute top, you're definitely gonna wanna have those things. Speaking of great personalities, this is gonna be the last person that I give an example of. Let's uh, talk about Sean Murray. He's a legend, probably the most legendary legend in our whole sport. He's also probably the most valuable person in our sport, in my opinion. Um, I personally think he has maybe the best personality in our sport and uh, yeah, he's just genuinely a great dude and he rips on his wakeboard at like the age of 40 something. So uh, yeah, I don't know, he's a really awesome dude. Before social media even existed, Sean Murray was winning contests. He was in full length wakeboard movies. He had his own video game to the same controls as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was actually made by the same company. So uh, yeah, that was sold millions of copies around the world and it made his name so big. He's basically like the Tony Hawk of Wake. Not only was Sean Murray doing these awesome things back then, he has continually adapted all the way till now. And that's one reason he's one of the legends that have stuck around this long. Murray has got a banger Instagram account and also a super dope YouTube channel where he gives tons of wakeboard advice and does a lot of water sports fun on the water which gets a ton of views and he also has kind of like the greatest wisdom about wakeboarding in our sport and he sort of spreads the love for wakeboarding throughout all of his channels. In my opinion, Murray is a way more positive guy than I will ever be. Probably like 50 times more positive than me and uh, I think this goes a long way when working with brands because you know whenever you have such a great attitude all the time I really think that kind of puts everyone in a good mood and they really want to support you more. I think that Murray provides a ton of exposure for our sport and he brings a lot of new people into wakeboarding and when those new people come into wakeboarding for the first time and they see the brands that Murray rides for, it really puts a good taste in their mouth for those brands. I'm not going to give any more examples of riders, I'm just going to kind of give a general idea of what someone should do to take that next level in sponsorship. If you're trying to be the number one rider, you better train and you better train hard and be ready to whoop some ass. In my opinion, this would probably be the hardest route to take, so it would probably be a good idea to try and build your social media platforms along the way and try and have a pretty good personality. And if you do have a bad personality, you should probably fake a good one at least because if you have a bad attitude, it's not gonna really get you very far. If you don't think you're gonna be capable of being the very best ultimate awesomest writer on the planet my best advice would be to be different and do things that no one else are doing and uh, honestly just do something that really separates you from everyone else so that you stand out and people take notice and no I don't mean go copy space mob because space mob is different because even if you out Wesley Wesley you're still not Wesley and uh, yeah that doesn't really help you stand out something that would be really beneficial for being sponsored and your career would be trying to really build a great relationship with a team manager. Sometimes this can be very difficult though because it could be sort of like dating someone you know you don't really want to hit them up too much and you kind of like scare them away but you don't want to stay too distant to where they're thinking you're doing absolutely nothing. So you gotta kind of find that balance, be a bro with them, and uh, yeah, just kind of make sure that they know that you're sort of a positive return of investment. 
but don't just be bragging on yourself because that's not really that cool. Another great thing to do when trying to move forward with a brand would be try and be buddies with other top athletes on that brand so that your name might get thrown around within the company. So whenever you do have a talk with the team manager, they will sort of trust your opinion more because they might have heard of you through other athletes and uh, they would already trust those athletes because they have already sponsored them. I think a great time to reach out about budget would be September or Surf Expo-ish time. I wouldn't necessarily say Surf Expo because a lot of times people of the brands during Surf Expo are pretty busy and a lot of the brands these days don't go to Surf Expo anymore. But September would be a great time because between then and and January 1 would be when most brands will be talking about budget for the following year. And it would be a great thing to have your name in the back of those brands' minds whenever they're setting those budgets for the following year because they might have some budget for you to help you follow your dream in wakeboarding. Something else to keep in mind is that a lot of people will tell you to go to Orlando because they will say that this is sort of the mecca of wakeboarding and this is where you need to go to get noticed. This isn't always necessarily true. I think it is a good idea to go there at some point and meet everyone there, maybe go there once a year for a short amount of time. But I do think that if you go to Orlando for a long period of time, say a year or multiple years and just be there, always you might get lost in the shuffle because there are so many top pro riders there that you sort of just blend in and get lost and maybe no one will ever notice you. In my personal opinion, if you are a boat rider, I think it would be a smarter idea to be somewhere less talent dense, say you're from Texas where I'm from or California or something like that. It's a lot easier to stand out here rather than being in Orlando, super talent dense area. So it might be a good idea to just go to Orlando for a week or so, meet up with all the top guys, make sure you're buddies with everyone, and then go back home where you really stand out. And uh, yeah, I think that would be a lot more valuable to a brand. Honestly, there's only so many boards and only so many boats that can be sold in Orlando. I think that it's kind of a negative return of investment to be investing in so many riders in the same spot. At the end of the day, what I think each and every rider should do to try and move forward with a brand is to just be yourself, be different than everyone else, find your own niche because if you are just blending in with everyone else, you're really not much value to a brand. But if you are different and reach out to a certain niche, I think that your value really goes up a lot and you could have a really positive return of investment. Remember that being sponsored is basically just being a billboard for these brands. And if you're not selling product, then why would these brands be wanting to invest in you? And if you are selling product, then that gives them tons of reason to invest in you. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Wakeboarding isn't about just being sponsored. It's totally cool if you're not. Wakeboarding is all about having fun, but I do know that there are a lot of guys out there trying to take it kind of seriously and make it a career path and kind of live out their dreams. So I figured I'd make this video for you guys. Anyways, that's gonna be it. If you guys did like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up Comment below what kind of videos you guys want to see in the future. And remember, I'll be uploading a wakeboarding video every second day forever. So make sure you guys subscribe. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.